Hey everybody, it's Calvin. I hope you're having an absolutely amazing day. And today I am going to bring to you uh, something new on the podcast. I'm calling it Sermon Casts. Sermon Casts are clips from messages I've spoken at my church, New Life Church in BB, Arkansas. And I thought that this was a great way uh, to add value uh, to you. And I hope that you enjoy these mini episodes. They're anywhere from 10 to 15 minutes long. Who knows if I get really, really lucky and do really, really amazingly well on a Sunday, I might bring you an entire message. Uh, But today we're going to go to a clip from a message that I spoke recently. And this clip is on pain and the process. I hope you enjoy it. Talk to you soon. I love this quote from Pastor Craig Groeschel, pastorslifechurch.tv. He says this, the distance between where I am and where God wants me to be might be my willingness and ability to tolerate pain. Another way to say that is no pain, no gain, right? It's true. I couldn't agree more because I can tell you firsthand that God will shape us through pain and failure. Anybody, God will shape us through pain and failure. Most of us can think about pain in our lives, whether it's been emotional pain or or relationship pain. I talked to you about just a minute ago. I had severe relational pain in my life. Maybe parenting pain. Maybe you do. We all got that if you got kids, right? Maybe you don't know how to lead a certain kid. You're, you're not sure how to, to push them forward in their life, help them, set them up. You're, 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 you, maybe you have a kid that's far away from God and you're not sure what to do. Maybe your parenting pain is when they leave Legos on the floor. Whoever made those, I just, poof. ah, ah. It's like a minefield. It's like walking through stickers. Now that's some parenting pain. Maybe it's even spiritual pain. It could be an unfulfilled desire, an unanswered prayer, confusion around a situation you don't understand. God Brooks got it right. I thank God for some unanswered prayers. Anybody in the house? I thought I wanted that, but I don't know what I want really. (laughs) But not too many months before we left Nashville in 2013, this verse was ringing true to me. And he, he told it to you a while ago, Proverbs 13, 12. Hope deferred makes the heart sick. But what? A dream fulfilled is a tree of life. I remember telling my pastor John at the time, I'm like, God is deferring my hope. My heart feels sick. I feel held back. I feel held down. And I don't understand because I know what he's called me to, but here I am waiting and pulled down and and nothing seems to be moving forward in it. But that wasn't it at all. It wasn't that he was deferring my hope. He was using the pain of the process to prepare me. I wasn't ready yet. He was using the pain of this process to prepare me. Let me say it like this. God uses the pain of process to prepare us for our purpose. God will use the pain of the process, not only to prepare you, but to literally propel you to your purpose. He will. You know the thing I see the most? It's not people that that refuse to obey God. It's people that refuse to submit to his process. People tend to bail on the process of God before he's done because they can't take it anymore. That was me. (laughs) I was trying to do that bad. Bad. Maybe it's because there was failure in your life. Maybe, maybe you're bailing before God's really done. Perhaps it's some time that you blew it big time. This was, this was me. I had blown, blown it big time in, in business one time. And it just, if I felt like a failure and I felt like I couldn't ever come back from it. And you're probably sitting there thinking about all the times or the time or for you advanced students, the times <laughs> where you failed. That would be me. I want you to see this. Proverbs 24, 16, for a righteous man falls seven times and rises again. Let me tell you something. Failure is not final. Look at this quote from Walter Brunel. Failure is the tuition you pay for success. It is. It's the failure you pay for success. I need to put that on a poster. Culture spends so much money, effort, and airtime trying to remove the risk from life. 
There's even some in our government who would love to be able to legislate risk completely from life. But perhaps we should reframe our idea of failure and no longer see it as an end, but see failure for what it truly is. It's a means and a teacher. Failure is a means and a teacher. It teaches us what to do, what works. It teaches us what not to do, what doesn't work. God uses the failures in our life to propel us forward. I think we should learn to celebrate failure. The great American inventor Thomas Edison said this, I've not failed. I've just found 10,000 ways that don't work. I like that. He also said this, never get discouraged if you fail. Learn from it. Keep trying. I think he knew something about it. When the enemy gets in your head and you start thinking about all the times you failed, you start thinking about your past, I've got some advice for you. The most spiritual thing of, that some of you can do is get up. Right? The most spiritual thing some of you guys can do is get up, lift your head, dance a little. Get some swagger about you. Your past is your past. It's all part of your story. Get up. Quit feeling ashamed of yourself. Quit feeling bad for yourself. Don't feel so guilty. You're down on yourself too much. You can't believe you were so stupid. Welcome to the club. You don't understand how you could be so unwise. You're human. Get up. Psychologist David Burns says that when you're faced with a challenge and do nothing, it leads to distorted thoughts about yourself. Such as, I'm helpless, I'm hopeless, I'm beyond change. These thoughts lead to loss of energy and motivation, damage, self-esteem, and feeling overwhelmed, which leads to procrastination, avoidance, and escapism. Philippians 3.13. I focus on one thing. Everybody say one thing. One thing. Forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead. I heard of a hero in the faith who refused to put his car in reverse. He was so intent on looking forward. Now, he was a little eccentric. He was a bit old, right? But he didn't. He would not drive backwards. Look at this. How many of you have kids? Okay. How many of you remember the learning to walk phase? Okay. Uh, I watched a little video of Caroline walking. And I love all, all babies have bow legs when they have diapers. And they're, they're, they look like they've been riding a horse for a few hours, right? And they do this and they got their fat rolls and stuff. So cute. Caroline was doing that. And what do you do when your baby falls down when they walk? Do you yell at them? You call them a failure? <laughs> no, that's funny. Do you call them a failure? Gosh, you're terrible. Get up. Do you think they're worthless? Do you cast them aside? You're terrible. You're never going to amount to anything. Do you do that? No, you smile and say, it's okay. I got you, baby. I'm here. Let's do it again. Come on. Let's go. Come on. First Peter 5, 10. And the God of all grace who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, after you've suffered a little while, will himself restore you and make you strong, firm, and steadfast. God's not throwing you away either. Failure is part of the process. It's part of the process. Ask anyone who's truly successful in life. And they will tell you that failure is not optional. It's essential. It's essential. Striking out can make you learn to be a better hitter. Making a C on a paper can help you learn how to make an A on a paper. Messing up as a leader can make you a better leader. If you learn from it. If you don't learn from your failures, then failure becomes your worst enemy. But if you learn from failure, it can become your best friend. I would not be who I am today had I not failed so much. Had I not failed so hard, I would not be who I am today. If you don't learn from your failures, you're bound to repeat them. God doesn't want us to fail on purpose now, okay? The Bible calls these people fools. And their lives are not desirable. Just read about them in Proverbs. Psalms 25. Show me your ways, Lord. Teach me your paths. This is a prayer. Guide me in your truth and teach me for you are you are God, my Savior. I hope in you all day long. The process of pain and failure is meant to strengthen and refine us. First Peter 1, 
So be truly glad. There's wonderful joy ahead, even though you must endure many trials for a little while. These trials will show you that your faith is genuine. It's being tested as fire tests and purifies gold, though your faith is far more precious than mere gold. In the process of refining metals, what happens? There's pressure applied, there's heat applied, and the, the junk that's in it rises to the top so it can be taken away. Without heating, without melting, without pressure, there could be no purifying. God's working through all of these things to shape us into the person he's called us to be. In Jesus' name, let's pray.